Today, we're separating the science of CRISPR from the science fiction. Confronting the hard truths about what editing human DNA really means for the future of our species. To understand CRISPR, forget the complex biochemistry. It's often described as molecular scissors, but that's too crude. Think of it like a GPS-guided word processor for your DNA. It uses a guide molecule to find a specific location in your genome, say, the mutation for sickle cell anemia. And then an enzyme like Cas9 makes a precise edit. And that's how we can revolutionize energy storage with this new material. So, in layman's terms, you're saying we have a tool to hack the operating system of a human being? That sounds incredibly powerful, Alex, but also profoundly unstable. The human genome is an interconnected ecosystem, not a line of code. You change one thing, you might trigger 10 others you didn't intend to, what we call off-target effects. It is powerful, but the precision is staggering and improving every year. And what most people don't realize is that right now, in 2025, this isn't theoretical. Patients treated with CRISPR for sickle cell disease are now several years post-treatment and functionally cured. We are seeing remission rates over 90% in some trials. That is phenomenal. That's somatic gene editing, treating a disease in a living patient. But the real ethical dilemma is germline editing, editing sperm, eggs, or embryos, where those changes are passed down forever. Exactly, and that's where the true preventative power lies. But statistics don't tell the whole story. The real impact is human. Let me show you what this future looks like. Imagine David and Sarah. David and Sarah are ready to start a family, but there's a shadow over them. David carries the dominant gene for Huntington's disease. Huntington's is a cruel genetic lottery. It's a slow, agonizing decay of the mind and body, starting in middle age. David watched his own mother go through it. It is 100% fatal. They have a 50-50 chance of passing it on. For years, their only options were adoption, using a donor, or rolling the dice. It was paralyzing. But in the near future, they have a new option. Germline CRISPR therapy. During the IVF process, they identified the embryos with the mutation. Using CRISPR, they correct the defective gene. They aren't adding anything new. They are restoring the DNA to a healthy sequence. A healthy embryo is implanted. The payoff isn't just that Lily is born healthy. It's the liberation from genetic fate. And Lily will never have to face the agonizing choice David and Sarah faced. The disease in their family line is gone forever. That's the future we're talking about. Not abstract data, but ending hereditary suffering. It's a beautiful story, Alex, deeply moving. But your vision is the absolute best case scenario. It's a sanitized version that ignores the messy, often tragic reality of medicine, economics, and human ambition. Alex, let's bring this back down to earth. Your vision assumes the technology works perfectly. 
and that people will only use it for noble reasons. We need an ethical checkpoint. History shows us that powerful technologies are never contained. We need to talk about the enhancement market. Let me tell you about the Chen family. Marcus and Elena Chen live in a hyper-competitive urban center. They are successful professionals, but they are drowning in the pressure. They are desperate for their next child to have every advantage. <laughs> they hear whispers that the global elite are already using genetic optimization. They find a clinic in a country with lax regulations. It's expensive. Mortgaging their future, expensive. But they are convinced it's necessary. The clinic offers the Einstein package. Enhancements to genes tentatively linked to IQ and memory retention. We're gonna start the procedure now. Just try to relax. This isn't about disease. This is about enhancement. The edits are made. The process looks high tech, but it's driven by profit, not careful science. Their daughter Mia is born. At first, she seems perfect. Incredible. Look at her go. But by age five, the complications start. The genes linked to intelligence are complex. The edits made to enhance her cognitive function had unintended consequences. This is the danger of pleiotropy, where one gene influences multiple unrelated traits. Mia develops debilitating anxiety and severe sensory processing disorders. Furthermore, the edits triggered a subtle but aggressive autoimmune vulnerability. She is brilliant, yes, but she is also fragile, medically compromised, and struggling to function. They tried to engineer a superior child and ended up creating a new form of suffering. And because the edits were germline, Mia may pass these complications on. Mia's story highlights the core issues. First, safety. Her condition shows the danger of pleiotropy. The data suggests a complex interaction between genetic predispositions and environmental factors, requiring a nuanced approach to treatment. Second, equity. What happens when the super-rich can buy genetic superiority? It creates a biological aristocracy a two-tiered society where the optimized geno-riches outcompete the unedited naturals. Mia's case is tragic, and the clinic's actions were unethical. But we can't halt progress because of bad actors. We implement bans on enhancement while fast-tracking therapeutic uses. The regulatory frameworks will catch up. I strongly disagree. When the failure is a child's life and the changes are hereditary and we don't just move on, the frameworks are not ready and the temptation to enhance is too powerful. Progress without wisdom isn't progress, it's reckless endangerment. Okay, clearly we don't see eye to eye on the risk tolerance here. We need your perspective. This is the fundamental question. Do you side with Alex's view that we must prioritize innovation to cure diseases like Huntington's, even if it opens the door to enhancement risks? Or do you agree with my dad that we must enforce strict 
perhaps global, moratoriums on germline editing to prevent inequality and eugenics. Even if it delays cures? Vote in the comments right now. Type Alex or Ben and tell us why. Go ahead and vote. While you do that, let's look at what the next few years of CRISPR actually look like. Okay, let's get concrete. Based on current research, here is a realistic, no-hype forecast for human gene editing over the next three years. The big focus remains on somatic editing, editing adults, not embryos. We'll see the first phase three human trials conclude for CRISPR treatments targeting genetic blindness, like Lieber congenital amaurosis. Expect major headlines about restoring sight. This is where we'll see limited FDA and EMA approval for the first wave of CRI SPR therapies move into standard care. We have some wonderful news for you. Oh, that's truly a blessing. The cost will be astronomical initially. However, the refinement of prime editing will make the technology safer, opening the door to treating muscular dystrophy and certain liver diseases. And this is where the nightmare accelerates. As the tech is proven, the enhancement market will explode underground. We will see the rise of sophisticated, unregulated, genetic optimization clinics internationally. Expect the first major scandals, the first publicized designer babies born in secrecy, and the inevitable tragedies that follow. By the end of this decade, 2030, the delivery mechanisms, how we get the CRISPR tools into the body will be much more efficient driving costs down. This is when gene editing starts moving from a niche treatment to a fundamental medical tool. And that's the real test. By 2030, the technological barriers will have fallen, leaving only the ethical ones. The choices we make in the next three years will determine whether we head toward a cure for all or a fractured humanity. So, where does this leave us with the CRISPR dilemma? We've seen the dream of ending genetic disease and the nightmare of engineered inequality. Three things are clear. One, the potential to liberate families like David and Sarah's is revolutionary and morally compelling. Two, the hurdles, the safety risks, and the societal dangers seen with the Chen family are profound, but we are actively developing technical and policy solutions. And three, the next 36 months are absolutely critical. This is arguably the most important conversation happening today. If you're fascinated by the intersection of science, ethics, and the future of humanity. Make sure to subscribe and join us on this journey. Thanks for watching. Innovation